Hello there. Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Criterion. In this edition, we take a closer look at a blistering existential Western from Glauber Rocha, Black God, White Devil. might imagine that by now the history of cinema would be a written book, done and dusted. But there seems to be endless directors from the past left to be still discovered, or if they've had the misfortune to be forgotten, rediscovered. One such director is Glauber Rocha, a pioneer of the Cinema Novo movement that galvanised Brazilian cinema in the 1960s. In Brazil, Glauber Rocha is anything but forgotten. There, the Bahia born director, who died in 1981, aged 43, is still revered and widely screened. And his 1964 film, Black God, White Devil, has been voted the greatest Brazilian film of all time. Outside of Brazil, though, Glauber Rocha's name has been largely neglected. His films generally associated with the wave of radicalism and sometimes visionary cinematic practice that emerged from third world cinema in the 1960s. But watch Black God, White Devil for the first time, and you're in for a shock. And you'll understand why Louis Bunel, no less, declared the film the most beautiful thing he had seen in a decade, filled with a savage poetry. Black God, White Devil is a startling piece of work, and savage indeed. It's part biblical myth, part epic ballad, part political drama, part Latin American Western, and it's also a great figures in a landscape film, to equal those of another great 60s filmmaker currently being rediscovered as well, and that's Hungary's Miklos Jansko. Now, Black God, White Devil is set in the 1940s, although the feeling of timelessness in the film is such that the action could easily be taking place in some pre-Columbian era, or indeed in the Old Testament times. The film's anti-hero is Manuel, Geraldo del Rey, a poor farmer in the Sertao, the arid plains of Brazil's northeast. Inspired by a vision of St George, Manuel strikes down an exploitative boss and then heads out across the plains, accompanied by his sceptical wife Rosa, played in the film by Yona Magulis. In the film's first are, uh, Manuel attaches himself to the peasant army following Sebastião, played by Lidio Silva, a charismatic preacher of decidedly apocalyptic tendencies. And then after extremely brutal explosions of ritualistic violence, of which they are the only survivors, Manuel and Rosa join the camp of Captain Corisco, Orton Bastos, a demented demonic freebooter with a split personality, who rechristens Manuel Satan. Now, the film's second hour becomes a bizarre and haunting piece of absurdist theatre, with the Sertao sun-baked expanses acting as the stage. Hovering in the background of all of this is the legendary hired killer, Antonio das Mortes, Maurizio do Badie, a rifle-toting figure in a vast black hat and huge overcoat, who could have walked straight out of a Sergio Leone western. And no coincidence indeed, since Leone was of course a huge admirer of Rocha, and incorporated elements of his imagery into his own Man With No Name cycle. Shot by Valdemar Lima in stark black and white, the film certainly has the epic desolation of a Leone western, underwritten by a Marxist view of historical and political conflict that's taken straight out of the Eisenstein book. The film feels at once like a sprawling, spasmodically bloody nightmare, and like an allegory with Manuel and Rosa standing in for the Brazilian people caught between the twin temptations of the church and the army. The cactus-studded Sertão itself, disturbingly claustrophobic for all its spaciousness, becomes as resonantly mythical a location as John Ford's Monument Valley was, while the scenes early on as Sebastião's followers crowd around their idol on top of a mountain has the exalted intensity of a Cecil B. DeMille biblical drama shot on a poverty row budget. Indeed, poverty's the word. In fact, in 1965, Glamour Rocha 
uh, composed a manifesto proclaiming his aesthetic of hunger and calling for a revolutionary cinema to express the rage of the dispossessed. He called his work these sad and ugly films, these desperate films, where reason doesn't always possess the loudest voice. Black God, White Devil certainly vaults way beyond reason, with the multiple-voiced Captain Carisco, bandit clown Napoleon figure, proving one of the most unsettingly excessive figures in film. The twin registers of the epic and the intimate are also underpinned by Glauber Roche's use of contrasting music. On one hand, we have rudimentary narration provided by Sergio Ricardo's folk balladry, while on the other, the sweeping, sometimes bombastic orchestrations of the great Brazilian classical composer Heitor Villa Lobos. Now, before his untimely death, Glauber Rocha went on to complete a trilogy, the other episodes being Terra em Transa and Antonio das Mortes, as well as other films including the wonderfully titled study of African politics, Der Leone Have Stept Cabezas. But he made Black God, White Devil at the remarkable age of just 25. And while the film's full of youthful fury, it also embodies a cinematic confidence and complexity beyond the director's years. It's visionary cinema at its finest. Now, this epic fable is full of energy. It came out of the blue and seemed utterly novel when Festival Gorge discovered it in 1964. It was the winner of the International Critics Prize. Black God, White Devil is both seductive and disorientating. Two months before the Cannes screening of Black God, White Devil, Brazil was shaken by the military coup that led to the dictatorship for the next two decades. And it was the beginning of a dark period and Rocha's cinema acted as a harbinger. Now with this film, Glauber Rocha affirmed his desire to reconstruct a Brazilian culture through his cinema, following the example of the French New Wave. Eager to explore new narratives, he constructed rich frames, used documentary images and did not shy away from hyper-dynamic editing. Social realism, precariousness and oppression were also recurring themes. His methods turned him into the spokesman for Brazilian cinema novo. Now this film comes to the collection on Blu-ray with the following special features. A new 4K restoration on the Blu-ray, with original 35mm materials being used, preserved by the Cinemateca Brasileira. Audio commentary by the restoration producer Lino Mareles. New interview with the film scholar Richard Pena. Glauber the movie, Labyrinth of Brazil from 2003. That's a documentary on the director Lauber Rocha. Cinema Novo from 2016, a documentary on the Brazilian film movement. Memoria do Cancaso, that's a short documentary on the origins of Cancaso, a form of social banditry in northeastern Brazil. There's a trailer and new English subtitle translation for the film and an essay written by the film scholar Fabio Andrade. And cover art is based on the original poster for the film by Rogerio Duarte. Suffused with anti-authoritarian fervour and the intensity of life in the desert, this landmark work of radical cinema is a scorched earth allegory about mindless fanaticism and the allure of dead-end ideologies. Black God, White Devil has a running time of 118 minutes and it's in a 137 by 1 aspect ratio and it releases in the Criterion Collection on Tuesday the 16th of July a spine 1225. In the next edition, we bring you Farewell My Concubine, the first Chinese film to win the Palme d'Or, and it comes to the collection in stunning 4K UHD. That's next time round. So until then, from me, as always, it's goodbye, and above all, good criterion viewing. Mm -hmm.